Well, hello to my precious, wonderful people. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm always, always excited um, to reach you on this platform where we discuss the things of the Spirit. So I welcome you once again. Um, for the last two weeks, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and I. And the reason for this particular series is just to intensify discussions on the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit and how it affects our growth and our development as believers. The Bible says God has given us the Spirit. He has sent for the Spirit of His Son into us by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And I believe that when God gave us His Spirit, He gave us everything. He gave us everything. There's nothing more that He can give to us than His Spirit that He has put in us. And it is important as a believer to, in our relating with the Holy Spirit, learn to know and to understand Him and His ways because that is what deepens our walk with God. And that is what helps us to explore um, the so many good things that we stand to enjoy in our journey of the faith. But today we are going to be, we're still talking about the Holy Spirit and I, but we want to, in this and two or more episodes, we want to talk about the Spirit of Revelation. We've spoken about Him as a Spirit that bears witness. We've spoken about the Spirit as our helper. The Bible calls Him our helper that will abide with us forever in John chapter 14. But today we are going to talk about the Spirit as the Spirit of Revelation. And I will read a scripture for us. I'm merely just going to introduce um, the topic today. And then we'll have further discussions in the subsequent episodes. So, put yourself together, fasten your seatbelt, get your pen and paper, and let's discuss for the next few minutes. Now, if you have not subscribed to this channel and you're new, please do well to subscribe. There's so much, so much content that will bless and edify you as you will see and as you have seen. And do well to like and share with as many as you can. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, first of all, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, the Bible says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So here the Bible is speaking, us, is speaking of we receiving all things um, as the benefit of our salvation which has been wrought through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible says if he did not spare his son but gave him for our sake so that we can be saved, how much more shall he not give us all things? And the concept of these all things in context of the believer's journey with God, simply talks about now that you are in Christ Jesus, um, being introduced to a heavenly system that gives you access to things that are laid up for you in the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 9, the Bible says, But as it is written, eyes had not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So here we see things that God has prepared for those who love him, those who have been saved. But it gets more interesting as we read down. Verse 10 says, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. So the concept of these all things, particularly um, 
majors on the aspect of the deep things of God. So these are spiritual realities introduced to us or brought to our familiarization by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the one that brings us into the experience and the assurance of these things that the Bible is talking about. And of course, these are not just physical or material things. These are spiritual things. Whether they are anointings or graces or mantles or giftings uh, or abilities, whatever they are, they are called the things of God, the deep things of God. Let's read on. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So we see that these are things that are first of all the deep things of God, meaning they are secrets because they are captured and enshrouded in the realm of the spirit. And the Bible says these things are revealed to us by the spirit of God. So this brings or this projects the Holy Spirit first as a revealer. What does it mean to reveal? To reveal means to disclose something that is a secret to the audience hitherto. To reveal means to bring to light, to cause to manifest something that is hidden, something that's an enigma, something that is encoded. You know, when you become born again, you're, you are made alive with God. That means the spiritual dimension of you is unlocked. Your spirit man is recreated. And as a result, you now have a part of you that is God conscious. Your spirit man has senses with which it interacts with its spiritual environment just like your physical body your physical the physical you have senses with which they interact with the physical environment even so your spirit man has senses with which it interacts with the spiritual environment it is by these senses you'll be able to see to feel to touch and to know the things that the bible is talking about here the things of the Spirit that are the things of God. And the realm of the Spirit is not just some um, gloomy and oblivious place. It is a real world of its own that contains in parallel almost everything that we have and even more in the physical. So it is the Spirit of God that brings the disclosure of these things, of these realities to your spirit man so that you can interact with these things and get to perceive God uh, from a different standpoint. So the Bible introduced the Holy Spirit as a revealer. Now, do you know that for God to disclose knowledge to us, that in the spirit realm, knowledge does not come in form of words. Yes, words are a medium by which informations travel. But in the realm of the spirit, when knowledge comes to you, because there's a thing such as spiritual knowledge, maybe we'll do a different episode on that spiritual knowledge and talk about what it is. But knowledge in the natural is conveyed through words. But not so in the supernatural, not so in the spiritual. In the spiritual, knowledge is conveyed to an individual, to an entity, or to an agency as light. How do I know? Psalms 119 verse 130. The entrance of your word giveth light. Okay? So light is the medium by which things travel in the spirit realm. 
And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 13 and 14 thereabout, that that which makes manifest is light. So, when you come into the realm of the Spirit, you are going to have uh, a cluster of light. You are going to have uh, a spectrum of light. Each of these lights differ for one, from one another, revealing or communicating a particular spiritual knowledge. You remember when Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians 15, he said there is another, there is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. And he says one star differ from one another in glory. The word glory there is the word doxa in the Greek. It means brilliance. It means light, illumination. So when it's talking about celestial or spiritual things, it talks about them in the perspective of light. So what the Holy Spirit does is, He's the one that converts the knowledge that is transmitted to your spirit man as light. He converts it to become words that your mind can be illuminated to understand. Now, this is very deep and powerful, but I'm saying it in a simplified way so we can get it. In same Psalms 119, in verse 105, the psalmist says, your word is a lamp unto my feet. That's a kind of light. And a light unto my path. With a lamp, you can just see few paces around you. That speaks of a dimension of the wisdom of God's word that gives you guidance for every step. And it does it by instruction. God will instruct you, you obey and the, your obedience to that instruction leads to the deployment of another instruction. And then you obey. And then the release of another. And so it just guides you step by step. That's why the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But when it says a light to my path, this is vision that can give direction for a stretch or long period of time. Say for six months, one year, two years. God can give you a word that changes your navigation or changes the direction of your life and your destiny for a given period of time. So things come to us as light in the spirit. Everything you want to experience in the realm of the spirit is in a degree or a brilliance of light. But how to access it in a way that your mind can understand is the work of the Holy Spirit. First of all, He empowers your mind and gives it the capacity to uh, communicate with things that are steaming from the realm of the Spirit. That's what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse 17. That God will grant to you to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And in verse 18, it says that the eyes of your understanding, which is your imagination, will be able to be enlightened that you may know. So that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know. You see, light and knowledge. Light and knowledge. So the Holy Spirit gives supernatural abilities. He empowers your mind to be able to decode these mysteries in the realm of the spirit that manifest as light. Think of it like a satellite transmitter. Or think of it as a device that can receive waves and frequencies and transmit them to become voices, like a radio or a computer. So it's the Holy Spirit that gives the supernatural abilities to your mind he is still the one that brings those lights and converts them to become information in words that your mind can understand that's the reason why when a prophecy comes to you you have a faith and a conviction in your spirit that this is of God you have this knowing in you that this 
has always been part of your destiny. But that knowing did not translate to an understanding before that time. So it tells you that your spirit knows what is happening, but your mind has not come into the knowing that exists in your spirit because your mind accesses information as words, but your spirit accesses information or knowledge as light. So the conversion of a spiritual knowledge from light to words is done through the ministry of the Holy Spirit as the revealer. That's why most times when God appeared to men in scripture, there was always a brilliance, a radiance of light. And every appearance of God communicated something to people. Whether it was to John in the Isle of Patmos, or to Paul the Apostle when he was on his way to Damascus, a light shone from heaven, brighter than the sun, and blinded him. That was simply God telling him, your zeal is operating without knowledge. You are persecuting what you should defend or protect. And many other several appearances, even to Moses and Old Testament saints. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit as revealer. The Bible says that God has revealed these things to us through his spirit because he searches all things and even the deep things of God. He searches out what needs to be revealed, what needs to be communicated according to the mind of God and he communicates to us. So everything, there is an entrance of light into your spirit. But the conversion process to your understanding takes time because understanding is processed in time. It's now coming into your soul. But every day the Holy Spirit is bringing different manifestations of light, spiritual knowledge into your spirit. Whether it's about your destiny, about your family, about your life partner, about your business. And so spending more time with the Holy Spirit and becoming intimate with Him will give you access to the understanding of these realities that manifest in your spirit. So we're going to stop here because this is just the introductory aspect. We are going to talk further and go deeper in the next two episodes. It's going to be an interesting and amazing time talking about the Holy Spirit as the spirit of revelation. But I want to pray for you. Jesus said to his disciples, Blessed are your eyes that see the things that you see. And blessed are your ears that hear the things that you hear. That God will open up your spiritual senses so you can see and hear and know and understand the things that God is revealing by his Spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that you open the eyes of your people to see their ears to hear, their hearts to understand and to know. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Between now and the next episodes, I know you will experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a spirit of revelation. Send me your testimonies. Let me know the encounters that you will have or that you've, you have had after watching this it's going to get more interesting we're talking about the spirit of revelation he has been revealed to you he has been given to you and he has come to bring to your understanding all things god bless you bye for now